Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Legendary Guild Pact deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring 4 copies of Niv-Mizzet Guild Pact. This 5-mana 6-6 six, six has Flying and Hexproof from Multicolored, not the most relevant ability in Standard admittedly. And then whenever Niv-Mizzet deals combat damage to a player, it deals X damage to any target, target player draws X cards and we gain X life, where X is the number of different color pairs among a we control that are exactly two colors. So we basically add up all the guilds, if you will, and then for each guild represented, we get to increase the output from niv -Mizzet. So to get the most out of niv -Mizzet, we want lots of these guilds represented, and that's exactly what we've done here. Starting out at two mana, we could already adventure Kellen, Inquisitive Prodigy, letting us investigate and play an additional land this turn. Can be a way of ramping into niv -Mizzet ahead of schedule, so that essentially counts as a two-drop, represents the Simic guild. Then representing the Celesnia guild, we've got Catilda, which can help us ramp plenty of humans in the deck that can also tap with Catilda's ability and can also be another mana sink in the late game. And then buried in the garden, another multicolor permanent that will count for niv -Mizzet. can exile opposing non-land permanents and then also make additional mana and this can also potentially fix our colors which is quite useful in a five color deck. And then representing a Gruul, we have two copies of Ruby, another way of ramping early on, and that can also potentially set up a turn three partners, another Gruul card, and this is very synergistic with niv -Mizzet, as we can give it haste so we can immediately attack and get the ability going. And then representing Orzov, we have two copies of the Dauntless General, which can be sacrificed to protect our other humans, such as the partners. Then representing Azorius, we only have the two copies of Danik, can be a nice creature to play early against a red aggro decks, and gives us a bit of value in the grindier matchups. And then representing Rakdos, we have four copies of Rivas of the Claw, a very important way to ramp out niv -Mizzet ahead of schedule, even making two mana in any combination of colors to cast dragon spells. And then a 3-3 menace that can also let us replay dragon spells from our graveyard once each turn, so that can also provide a ton of value. And then another dragon besides niv -Mizzet is Hidetsugu and Kairi, so that can also be ramped out by Rivas and can brainstorm when it enters the battlefield, so provides immediate value, can maybe keep an expensive card on the top of our deck, so that if our opponent takes out Hidetsugu without exiling it, we can deal even more damage on the way out. And then, as we've said, good with Rivas, and also representing the Demir guild. And then representing Izzet, we have two copies of Sarkon, Soul of Flame, a 2-4, saying dragon spells get a 1-mana discount. Not super useful with niv -Mizzet, since it doesn't reduce the color requirements, but it can potentially help us cast Hidetsugu on turn 4. And then more importantly, if we play a dragon with Sarkon in play, Sarkon can turn into that dragon for one turn, and it also is not legendary, so we can have two of the same dragon in play at the same time. So that's one way of maybe getting the effect from niv -Mizzet a turn sooner, by playing it and immediately connecting with our Sarkon niv -Mizzet. And then representing Golgari, we have two copies of Glissa, Sunslayer, 3-3, three, three, first rank death touch, so just a nice creature to get in the way of other creature decks, and can also maybe destroy enchantments or draw extra cards if it manages to connect. So that's all the guilds represented, except for Boros, couldn't find a good red-white card that fit into the deck. Maybe Anim Pakal has good synergy with the partners, so you could maybe try to fit that one in as well. But uh, yeah, that means we have a pretty high likelihood of at least drawing two or three cards with niv -Mizzet if we manage to connect. And then the life gain is also very useful to stabilize against aggressive decks. Now usually when I go over the mana base I mention that it's not that complicated. This time around the mana base took a lot of trial and error and kind of workshopping. So the important part is that we want to be able to adventure Kellen on turn 2. So we are prioritizing blue and green lands that come into play untapped early on. Which is why we have all these fast lands and pain lands. So the mana base is going to be a bit painful. And then we've got one of each tri land as well to help out in our 5 color deck. Then some of the channel lands that are useful, Iganjo for removal, same with Soaring City, and Boseju can maybe blow up an enchantment. And then Plaza of Heroes, also a very useful way to cast our legendary spells and providing a bit of utility in the late game, protecting niv -Mizzet. But it doesn't help us cast the Adventure on turn 2 from Kellen, so we typically don't want to play the Plaza until later in the game. And then rounding at the mana base, a few of these Innistrad duels as well. So we've got a pretty good mix of different colors while prioritizing some of our two drops that we can play early on. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. And yeah, I think we've got a keeper. We are missing black mana, however. 
So I can't play Revance or Glissa necessarily on turn 3. Although there's a decent chance we'll be able to. Yeah, I'll try it. There we go. So yeah, turn 3 Revance can cast Niv on the following turn, but kind of depends on the matchup. Now we maybe start with Glissa as kind of a distraction. Put into a self-mill deck, maybe the Monastery Mentor deck. Yep. So they are playing Haughty Jin as a potential flyer that can block niv -Mizzet. And there it is. Okay. So... Garden we can play alongside either Sarkhan or Rivas and attack. And a backup Niv. So let's go with, I think, Rivas, even though if I play Sarkhan I can already enable it next turn by casting Niv. Although it's on enters the battlefield, so they could still have a counter spell. There's Mentor. So one land untapped, but discount from Haughty Jin as well. And our opponent's going to chart, of course, so our opponent is tapped out. So coast is clear to resolve Niv. And I can uh, attack first. Put on chumps. And then we can play the general as well here if we tap carefully. Exile their graveyard, which is certainly relevant in the matchup. And we've got another one to shrink down Haughty Jin, make sure they can't keep getting creatures back on the cheap. And yeah, this Nif already has. Three color pairs on the battlefield can make it four with Sarkon. Another mentor is fine. And I consider. So they still need removal for Niv, or they're gonna have to chump. Hodijin in the graveyard. And no fifth land. Buried in the garden can remove Haughty Jin so we can connect. This is beautiful. So enchant our land. Let me just do this manually since I've made this mistake before. And now we've got four color pairs on the battlefields. Glissa can still attack. Maybe could have offered the trade for general since we have another one we could play. Although we might draw something else useful. So four damage to distribute, take out a mentor. Draw four cards. Okay, can still play a land. And uh, play Sarkon. Alright, things are going about as well as they could be. A uh, Lancer Shredder can try and chum block Niv. Although we might have the mana to play partners, play Niv Mizzet from hand just to turn Sarkon into Niv Mizzet. And give something else haste. Mentor is back. And we're gonna get an attack in as well. So this kind of implies that they can enable prowess at instant speed. Let's see, can sacrifice to gain hexproof and indestructible to all our humans, including Sarkon. Yeah, I guess we'll force the issue. Could also double block Mentor, but then we don't get to take anything out. But I kind of want them to tap out to an extent. 
so we don't have to worry about interaction. Alright, just a prankster. That's fine. And it looks like they put uh, General first. So don't need to sacrifice it. Okay, so I've got some options. Opponent's got one flying blocker. If I were to play partners, play Niv, then we have two Sarkons attacking basically, and if one of them connects, that should be game over. too much what we pump. Pump one of the two. Attack. And our opponent has seen enough. We'll get to hit them for at least six damage. And then how many multicolored pairs do we have on the battlefield right now? One, two, three, four. So it wouldn't quite be lethal, but our opponent would be chomping, and at that point we just take out Mentor instead. And we're still in pretty good shape, even with Iganjo available. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We will need to find another land or two along the way. But uh, Katilda can potentially cast a turn 3 Buried. So that's pretty nice. Opponent on green-white enchantments with turn 2 Companion. So Glissa should be pretty effective in this matchup. Currently missing red mana for partners, so that's why getting buried in the garden down could be important. And Loran. Yeah, luckily they didn't play it after we played our enchantment. So, might be more of an enters the battlefield deck. Either way, um, yeah, playing buried makes some amount of sense. Or we can get uh, Glissa going first. And maybe get some card advantage from it. Hallowed Haunting, so it is an enchantment deck after all. Okay. So we want to bury it in the garden to remove Hallowed Haunting. Glissa can attack first, or opponent's going to chump it. Jumps with Loran. And we'll enchant. Let's see, maybe our Lanor wastes. Opponent has a second Loran, that's painful. Also undoes our mana fixing. So now I cannot play Niv Mizzet. I guess with uh, Plaza we can still play partners at least. Alright, so next turn with partners making. A red, we can actually cast niv -Mizzet. Opponent's gonna go after Glissa. So the coast is clear for Niv. Could also potentially double spell here. Let's see, Let's go Sarkon plus Glissa, give Glissa haste. And then next turn, Sarkon turns into niv -Mizzet. That would be pretty sweet too. All right, I guess we'll give that a shot. And then we'll have multiple guilds represented. Alright, this turn is going to be glorious. So make white, red, green, blue, 
and black. And then give the summoning sick Niv Mizzard haste. And attack. And our opponent explodes. That's 14 in the air. And then we'll get to trigger both copies of Niv Mizzard for additional damage to close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of our hand? If we find red or black mana for Rivas, we can cast Niv on the following turn. We can play in general on two. So I'll try it. So we've got essentially two draw steps for either black or red mana. Opponent with turn one stalwart. And there's our red mana. So our plan is online. Opponent mono green, so don't expect too much interaction. They will find our general, fair enough. That happens. Okay, play Rivas, and then hope they don't have another one of those. But now with Buried in the Garden, I guess I can't quite cast it with my current setup. But that would technically fix her mana for Niv Mizzet otherwise. Jewel Thief grows Beast Caller. Okay. And another Beast Caller. Alright, so we dodged a bullet here. Take four. And uh, we've got Niv Mizzet for days. Now they can still grow Beast Caller quite a bit to attack past it. But now with Niv in play, Plaza makes the colored mana for Buried in the Garden to be effective. And that's a pretty clean answer. No attacks, love to see it. So yeah, we'll stick to the plan here. I want to do this before attacking, so we get more damage from Niv. And I guess we'll take out the Stalwart for now. And draw two. Okay. Next turn Hidatsugu adds another color pair. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a pretty sketchy hand, I would say. While I can play General on two, I can't even adventure Kellen, only have two lands to begin with. So I'll take a mulligan. Okay, give this a try. And then we've got a pretty nice setup with Rivas, maybe partners first to give Niv Mizzet haste. Although for up against Mono Red Aggro, we might die before we get a chance to do that. Turn to Scoundrel, not the most aggressive start. And Catilda I can cast. So we might go Partners on 3, Niv Mizzet on 4. Godric's not bad, although at least they don't have Celebration enabled. And no Werewolves for Catilda to block for free. But uh, yeah, partners can at least give Catilda two counters, and then partners is also a human that can tap for mana. So, very big turn. Can they remove partners? If not, then this Niv Mizzet could wreak havoc next turn. Monastery Swiss Spear, step one. And looks like a removal spell, Lightning Strike. That's too bad. So, we're still taking at least seven. And they also have a Monstrous Rage, so that's another four. We're at one life. Yeah, that's not gonna do it here. Can't even tap my Underground River for mana. So all I can do is play Rivas and uh, pass a turn and die. 
All right, well, we tried. I guess we'll go out on our own terms. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Not a fan of this hand. Still not great. We can play turn two Denik, turn three Sarkon. Yeah, I guess I'll try it. Missing black for Glissa. If our opponent uses Field of Ruin, we don't actually have a basic line to search up. And get lost Denik. Maybe the map tokens will help us find black mana. Alright, give uh, Sarkon a try versus can adventure Kellen. Play an extra land. Maybe go for it next turn. Opponent does nothing. And a Sunset Revelry. That's acceptable. Okay, now we could play Glissa if we'd like. Somewhat likely to run into a Sweeper, though. But I guess we can adventure Kellen first as well. Alright, they had a knockout blow. Conveniently, Sark on a red creature. So, that worked out for them. They're gonna get Lost Glissa right away, before we can keep up Plaza. And they're on the beatdown plan. Okay, we'll give uh, Kellen a shot. Could also Danik first. Which is also reasonable. And then I'll end up sacking the clue token. Rivas of the draw, and Catilda still missing one of our dragons. So, good chance our opponent has an answer to Denik as soon as it attacks. But I guess we'll find out. If that works. Yeah, I'll just play Kellum and pass it back so we don't overextend into a sweeper. And I don't want to start exploring just yet. Possible they had the conditional counter spell in hand, unless we pay three, which we would have been able to pay for. And have turned March on Kellen instead. Otherwise, we could have turned these map tokens into extra cards. Put in minusing Emperor without dealing with Denik is interesting. So they maybe misclicked here. All right. Well, then it goes after Wandering Emperor. Can play 2 3 Denik. And then now do we play Rivas or maybe just Cotilda? And sure, we'll explore once. And we'll explore twice. And we'll keep that one on top. Okay, a dragon to go with Rivas if it doesn't get exiled. So, can start by attacking. And see what's up. We can activate Katilda so we don't overextend into a Sunfall. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, go for it here. Bones at 11. Can keep exploring if I'd like. Keep a Niv Mizzet on top. And we'll keep that last map token around. And 
Uh, if there's a depopulate, at least draws us a card. Partners, okay. We're one mana short of partners, plus Niv miss it, sadly. I think we still want to set it up. And then we can get back Danik. And hit for five. Well, this game might have looked a bit different had they correctly minus the Wandering Emperor. But the game's not over yet. Put on discarding another Deluge. I'm glad they didn't activate Field of Ruin since that could have been pretty effective. It's reasonable to play one basic just for those types of effects, but at least with Boseju we can get our tri lanes. So our opponent passes with a bunch of mana. Maybe instead of Niv, which is worse in the face of Wandering Emperor, we can play Hidetsugu instead. Although, let's see, can we keep up Plaza? I guess that's three mana. Yeah, still a little bit short. Could go, I guess, Rivas and then keep up Plaza. Although they could feel the Ruin first and then still Emperor. Maybe we can bury it in the Garden and then still Hidatsugu. Sure. I guess your opponent can Field of Ruin, the land I tried to enchant. So there's a lot of layers to this. I'll just play this. Can pay for no more lies. Okay. Put some expensive card back on top in case they destroy without exiling. So I guess that would be niv Mizzets, although they can then shuffle with Field of Ruin as a problem. So, let's just go with cards I don't care about too much. Ruby, Kellen. Go to attackers. Yeah, might have still wanted to keep Plaza untapped. They did have Wandering Emperor. So it turns out if I kept Plaza untapped, we would have won the game right now. Although we're still in fine shape. I'd actually prefer getting rid of the Celestus here. Since we've got a bunch of flying threats anyway. And yeah, I guess Exiling Emperor when they can destroy my land with Field of Ruin would have been pretty bad. So their opponent flashes back Deluge. And uh, yeah, next turn, finally time to play niv Mizzets. Sunset Revelry, I don't think is enough. Man, our opponent explodes, if they know about niv Mizzets, can give it haste and get in for a ton of damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, this hand seems keepable. Turn two, Adventure Kellen. Turn three, we could cast it, or maybe a Buried in the Garden. Opponent on red aggro. So I'll play the Boseju to save myself some damage. And hope to draw a land. So we can cast Kellen next turn. Turn to Adversary. Alright, Catilda, the draw instead. Yeah, I guess uh, Catilda it is. Could try to draw land with a clue. That's a bit risky. Might be a two mana Witch Talker Frenzy. Okay. At least they won't have it for our larger creatures now. And uh, we'll go for Kellen. 3-4 is a pretty good blocker. If it survives, great. If not, it's not a disaster. So this kind of implies a monstrous rage, giving 3 extra power, 1 extra toughness. So we'd still trade for Adversary. 
Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, land is good. So playing the partners without a creature in play is not the best. And don't necessarily want to spend Buried in the Garden on Phoenix Chick, so I'll just cast Kellen. Skip the adventure part. Kumano, that's fine. And now Ruby lets me double spell. Ruby plus partners. Grow Kellen. Thanks to Vigilance, can play offense and defense. Alright, so we may not need niv to close it out here. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And uh, yeah, I think we've got a keeper. Just missing niv -Mizzet. We'll have to decide right away if we want to go for Kellen or General. I think Kellen makes sense, even though it could get slowed down by uh, Thalia. So I guess if we go Underground River, I can still choose either one of them. Companion's fine. So I wouldn't mind drawing another land. Perfect. So we can adventure, put in Rafine's Tower. Their opponent on green white enchantments, Katilda, good target for buried in the garden, so they don't get it back either. And if Mizzet was perfect. So sure, let's go for it. I might still end up casting partners before Niv Mizzet just to get that immediate hit. In case her opponent's holding ossification, which would be a good answer to Niv Mizzet otherwise. All right, points going off. Reign of Truth. Take five. And another general. So I cannot play partners plus general to protect the partners. Could go Rivas plus general. And then Rivas can hold off some of the smaller creatures while making two mana for Niv. But even if I draw land next turn... We wouldn't have enough to play partners and Niv, which is the eventual goal. So, pretty interesting spot. I guess I will go General plus Rivas and slow roll uh, a Niv a little bit to try and play around Ossification. Because even if they Ossification partners, that would be kind of sad. Could trump block with a general if needed, especially if they play a second Reign of Truth. Hallowed Haunting, okay. Two cards left. Now the problem is if our opponent starts making flying creatures, they can just jump Niv to prevent the ability from connecting. And our opponent did have a touch of Spirit Realm left. So, takes care of Rivas. It's not a human, so we can't protect it with a general. Okay. I will take the trade for Naturalist if they offer. So our opponent declines. Take five. And it's not looking great here for us. Poseidon is interesting. Potentially an answer to Hallowed Haunting. So we could go Partners and then Poseidon. I'll take one damage off my mana, but then we can protect partners and then next turn connect with niv -Mizzet. Might still be the way to go. Question is if we want to wait here. 
think we're better off just dealing with the haunting now. And then on the board we're not dead. And we don't have to worry about flying blockers. Alright, pass it back. Fang is fine. Okay, finally time for niv to make his grand entrance. So we've got three different color pairs represented. So we'll probably take out the naturalist at this point. And then I can't quite keep up Iganjo. So we'll play a tapped land. And pass. Borrow time, that's an answer to niv -Mizzet. Okay, so game's not over yet. We do still have Kellen that can gain flying here. And if they attack like so, I can just block the Fang with partners. Could also chump with the uh, General here if we'd like. Since we do have another one, although we might draw something useful with Kellen. Portrait shrinks down, back to a 5-5. Five five. Alright, so play Kellen and keep up my Ganjo as well. I don't think the general can afford to attack. A Rivas I could cast. Which is probably worth it. Then we just need Kellen plus partners to survive. Opponent goes all out. So we can line up some blocks. I Ganjo, so response use general. And then we should be able to get there, especially now with Hidetsugu has another hasty threat. Oof, a very close one here against the green-white enchantments. So yeah, we got to see our five-color niv deck in action. And it's certainly on the jankier side, so don't expect it to be very competitive. It's going to get steamrolled by Monorad Aggro more often than not. But if you curve out nicely and the lands cooperate, you can definitely set up some fun plays. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always... Have a nice day.